It's a hot one today. What's up, Fredsters? Welcome back to another fun day fishing with Fred. Hopefully you guys can hear me. This wind's picking up quite a bit, but I don't think it's gonna let down anytime soon. So we're just gonna start filming. It's kinda hot. Woo! All right, so I got an email the other day from a guy that said he just recently moved to my area and he's trying to get his boy into fishing. He said they headed out to uh, my local lake a couple times and uh, haven't caught anything and they're getting kind of discouraged, kind of losing interest in, in fishing. So he reached out to me because he watched one of my videos. He's a Fredster. So he reached out to me and he asked me for some tips, some pointers. And if I can help a kid get hooked on fishing, I'm 100% there. That got, to, that got me to thinking, how many other Fredsters are there out there that are in the same boat as that guy? So with that said, I came up with an idea. I'm gonna do a little throwback series. We're gonna call it Fred's Fishing, Fred's Fishing Roots. With this new series, I wanna, be, I wanna try to make it as real to you guys as possible. I wanna show you guys the beginnings of whenever I started angling, what helped me out, what rigs helped me progress as an angler. I want, I want this to be as, as, as real to you guys as possible. So I came out to this pond today, and if you guys see me fish here before, it's a small pond and it's highly pressured. So then, in, in a way, it's kind of similar to public lakes and other waters where you guys are probably most likely gonna fish. I don't wanna go to some stalker pond where I can throw anything in there and five seconds later get a fish. I wanted this to be as authentic and real as, as it can. So in this series, I'm just gonna go over Straight up from the beginning, what, what I started off using and then how I got to where I am today. Hopefully this series kicks off pretty good, hope you guys like it, but I say we get started and let's talk about my first rig that got me hooked on bass fishing. <laughs> This rig right here, the Carolina rig. This was seriously my first rig that I gained confidence in. I remember, I remember years back, that's all I used to throw was a Carolina lit rig with a lizard, a zoom, a zoom lizard on there. And I really didn't know much about about fishing at the time. Only what people have told me or what I could find on the internet. And I remember. I used to swim a Carolina rig with a lizard on there because I thought that's how how it was supposed to be meant to be, be fished was was swimming because that lizard had had some tails on there and it looked good moving and I remember my uncle told me that's that's the way to do it so that's how I thought was the way to do it it worked it definitely worked I caught fish that way but Carolina rig is versatile it's really meant to be dragged on the bottom Carolina rig is probably most popular in, in deep water but me as a bank angler I've caught a lot of fish using the Carolina rigs in the shallows it's, be, it's proved to be very effective for me anyway so if you guys don't know aren't familiar with what a Carolina rig is I'll get a, a closer picture but it's pretty much a bullet weight some kind of weight some lead tied to a double barrel swivel tied to a leader tied to a hook with your favorite bait on it. like I said like this was one of the rigs that I started off using and this is a great rig to cover water and to find those bites. It works shallow, it works deep, flow fast, about anything you want on the end of this thing and drag it on the bottom and I'm sure you'll get a bite. I'm sure you'll get a bite. So let's hit the water and see if we can catch fish on one of my first rigs I gained confidence on. You got your main line, got a bullet weight, swivel, leader line, depending on what you're comfortable with and then your hook Texas rigged creature what worm whatever you want but the length of your leader is going to be depending on what you feel comfortable with I would recommend starting anywhere from 12 to 18 inches when you guys start off from hook to swivel this is going to be free on this side of the swivel this weight 
Let's do it. All right, Fredsters. So depending on how deep it is or how windy it is, that's how you choose your weight. The deeper, the windier, the heavier. The shallower, the less windy, the lighter the weight. So what we're going to do, we're going to just toss this thing out there. That weight's going to take it down to the bottom. We're going to give it a couple seconds. I know it's not deep here, not too deep here anyway, so. Whoa, whoa. I don't gotta wait too long. Oh man, I, if I don't fall on my face before. Oh, splatter webs like a mofo. Ugh. All right, so I think we're good there. So I'm gonna reel in my slack until I get, until it gets pretty tight. And that bullet weight, he's gonna ride on the bottom. And that thing might catch some weeds and stuff, but your bait is gonna be back in the back, floating around, dancing around. So once you get your line tight, we're just gonna lift the tip of the rod. Move your line, or move your bait with your rod, not your reel. Don't reel in your bait. Move the tip of your rod. Just slowly. So lift it up a little bit, and then lower the tip of your rod as you reel in your slack. Let it sit there for a little bit. There's a lot of spider webs, man. Ugh. Ugh. And then just replete the process. Just keep, just drag it slowly with the tip of your rod, not your reel. Just lift up on it. And then as you, as you go down, reel in your slack. And the same thing. Just keep on pulling it. Just nice and slow. You can do it to the, you can do it to the side like I'm doing, like like this, or you can do it, you can do it up like that. Just go slow with it, and just reel in your slack slow. You want to move the bait with your rod, not your line or your reel. Just want to keep moving it, nice and slow. So this is why this rig's like usually most popular in deep water. Because you're not going to want to move your bait that fast whenever you're 30 feet down there. You're going to want to drag it over that rock pile or whatever. But I've learned... Whoa, what was that thing? That was crazy. Um, I learned that this is just as effective in shallow water as it is in deep water. So I didn't get a bite on that one. I'm going to try somewhere else. Just going to toss it out there. That weight's going to fall, that worm's going to follow, just a little bit slower. We're going to make sure, we're going to let, know it's on the bottom, it's only like two feet right here, so then we're going to reel in our slack, make that line tight, and then we're slowly going to move the rod tip. And so you can't move it no more. And then slowly reel in your slack. Wait for a second, and then move it again. So keep doing that. Sometimes you can move it a little faster, a little slower. It just depends on the day and the fish. Just experiment and see what the fish want for that day. Like I was saying earlier, like I started off swimming this thing. That's how I thought was the right way to do it, was to swim a lizard back in with that weight. And that worked. Now, I thought that was the way you, you should do it. That was, that was the only way you should do it, because that's the only way I would get bites, because I didn't know how to really use it. That just goes to show you anything is possible when bass fishing. Sometimes it, it, it is nice to stand out from the rest and be a little different, because then you might get that, that different bite. So we're just going to keep dragging this thing on the bottom. I always wanted to try, well, if, if, you're, if you're trying to do this, keep this in mind. You always want to have bottom contact. That weight always on the bottom. I like that concept because I always know where my bait's at. Whenever I'm throwing like a weightless worm or something, I don't know if my worm's on the bottom or if it's on the top. With this weight, you can tell where it's at in the water column. I haven't even told you guys, this is how I caught probably one of my personal best. Legit personal best. And uh, that was on a Carolina rig lizard like three years ago during the spawn, crawled it over a bed, she hit it twice, broke off twice, got tired, re-put put new line on, everything, threw it back out, same spot, hooked her, she had both my lizards in her mouth, it was a six pounder.
move around to where I think I know where some fish are. I just wanted to hang out in the shade right here because it is a warm one today. But just for the video's sake, we might just go get some burnt and catch a couple bass on the Carolina rig. Seriously, those two right there are what I started off on the Carolina rig. Zoom, lizard, magnum, or regular, and a good old seven inch trick worm. These are probably the colors too, next to watermelon red that I used. All right guys, just hooked up the lizard. Let's do this. This is bringing back memories, guys. This is fun. I think just for the fun of it, I'm just gonna swim this first one back. I think I'm just gonna swim this one back just for the fun of it, see what happens. Dang, that thing looks killer in the water though. God. No wonder I had so much good luck with this thing swimming it. That thing looked prime. That thing looks so good swimming in the water. Holy crap. Now I want to get one swimming this thing. Alright guys, so this is pretty much what it's going to look like in the water. The weight's going to be right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know, we might, we gotta find some kind of fish. We gotta find one. Gotta catch at least one or your eyes ain't gonna believe me. All right, hopefully we got a little better luck over here. We are standing in the water and this water is really warm. It's like super warm right now crazy. It was good though. Dragging this thing on the bottom. The lizard's dragging the bottom. There's one guys. Finally. It's a decent one too guys. Oh my god. Where buddy? It's a big spotted bass. Carolina rig, spotted bass. He's big, dude. It's a big spotter. Told you, Fredsters. Carolina rig, it works. The only thing that kind of sucks about the Carolina rig, this is a nice fish, dude. Is you gotta be kind of slow with it. You gotta be patient. This is a beautiful fish, man. I think I might have to go get my skill for you, buddy. You're pretty. This guy is straight. Thick, dude. That's so big. It's crazy for this pond this guy's in here. This is a good three pounder right here. Right in the side of the mouth. Let's pop that out real quick. I'm gonna go get my scale, buddy. You're, you're pretty. You're pretty big. Let's run over there. Let's run, buddy. Come on. You're pretty fat. Oh, my truck's way too far, dude. I'm not gonna make you do all that. I thought my truck was right here, but it's not. Look at that, guys. That's a pretty fish, man. I'm seriously thinking he's about two or three pounds spotted bass right there. Dude, he's such a gorgeous fish. Let's get him back in the water, guys. I thought my truck was right here. I was going to weigh him, but it's definitely a two pound, three pound spotted bass. You guys just gotta be, just be slow with the Carolina rig. I know it's not fun sometimes, but then you get big spotted bass like that. 
Let's get a release on this guy. Oh no. That stuff's nasty down there. Alright, buddy. Dude. Powerful fish. That was a strong guy. Spotted bass are super strong, guys. That's a big one. I can't believe I caught that spotted bass in this little pond. Sweet, guys. We did it. All right, guys, on, on the way to get my my line and throw it back out there, I noticed my line's gone. It snapped somehow. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, snapped. Crazy. Check it out, guys. That fish bit my hook out. How crazy is that? That was a strong spotted bass. That was crazy. I caught him in this little pond. That was a pretty big one. Yeah, he straight bent my hook out. That's nuts. That fish was pretty strong, man. Try to bend this back, see if we can get another one. Guys, that blows my mind. There's spotted bass that size in here. That's like, it's like really cool. <laughs> Cause we live, my local lake is a, is a pretty good spotted bass fishery, but I can catch them here. <laughs> That's nuts, man. That's crazy. Usually spotted bass, they thrive in colder water. And like this water is super warm. That's why I'm thinking they're hanging out where they're hanging out. That's crazy, guys. I think that's the biggest spot of bass I've caught in here. That was probably a three pounder. That was a good one. All right, Festers, that's gonna do it for today. We didn't catch a lot of fish, but we did catch one good spotted bass. For this size of pond and where it's at, a spotted bass that size is is unimaginable. That's that's some crazy stuff in my eyes. So. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys got a little better insight on the Carolina rig. I don't know how that spotted bass got it in here. If someone put it in here, if I came through the pipes as a little fish and got that big throughout the years, I'm not too sure. But for it to be in this pond, it's pretty crazy. So I hope you guys like the new video style. I think it's going to be a cool, cool new series. It's going to allow me to kind of interpret my own experiences and uh, what I've learned over the years to you guys. If you guys like the video, let me know by hitting that like button or comment down down below if uh, you guys need something a little more clar clarified or something if I didn't explain something too too fully for you guys but I just want to say thanks for coming back to the channel thanks for fishing with Fred hope you guys like the new season there's gonna be some more coming out pretty soon until then have fun catch fish I'll see you guys next time